Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to the next PTC User Expert uh, Speaker Series. We're just going to give it another minute to give people a chance to get on to the uh, webinar. For those of you who are just joining the webinar, um, we're going to get started in about one minute. Um, we see that the attendee list is starting to grow. We're going to give people a chance to uh, to get uh, joined in and settled, get their audio working. Um, just a reminder um, that this uh, this webinar is uh, being recorded, and we will share that uh, in the uh, in the next uh, in the next week. And um, we'll uh, we'll have some announcements on some future webinars as well. So uh, just give it about uh, about 30 seconds more. It's kind of stabilizing now. The attendees are coming on. And then we'll get started. All right, why don't we get started now and we'll see if we see the uh, attendee list continue to grow. That's great. So welcome everybody. My name's Ron Watson. I'd like to welcome you to the latest PTC user expert uh, speaker series. Uh, Creo color coding, a technique to transfer 3D model information into downstream processes. And, and we have Jan here, um, uh, one, of the, one of the original founders of this uh, whole organization and a great contributor. So let me, uh, let me just kind of walk through a few intro slides um, for you. Um, first of all, um, the PTC user mission, just to remind you, we're here to support, educate, and advocate. Um, we are the users of PTC software, um, and it's all about you. And there are ways you can participate, lots of ways, and, and many of you do. Um, be a speaker at an upcoming webinar. Um, share your tips and tricks with fellow PTC users. Participate in an upcoming panel session, which we're gonna organize uh, for, for this year. If you wanna send in any kind of short videos of, of any features you do, but please feel free to contact me or any of the board of directors members, but but I'm, I'm the focal point um, in, in any way you feel you wanna contribute. Again, it's all about you um, and, and the members. Now, a uh, little, little sad news uh, here. Um, we had to cancel the event, which would, would ironically have been going on as we speak. Um, the obvious reasons of cancellation is, uh, is the current situation globally and uh, specifically in California, um, there was no way to have an event in California. There was no even outdoor dining in California until I think just a day or two ago, at least in Southern California. So, um, so we really couldn't do it. And, and I would have said it's postponed, but it's not. Um, so we don't, we don't believe we'll be going back to that venue, that specific venue, Mission Bay in the future. Um, and we're still trying to discuss, you know, and work through what would be the next um, event, where would it be, and also what would it be like uh, in the future, right? It all depends, and I think we're, we all understand this, and we do miss this, um, that this would have been another very successful event for us. So what's next? Um, well, we have the Badgerland uh, Lunch and Learn that's coming up. In fact, I think it's tomorrow, right? Um, and, uh, or I'm sorry, two days from now. So um, this is open to everybody, not just the, the uh, Badgerland people. Um, there's so far great attendee numbers coming in. So please feel free. There's a registered link um, that when you, if you get this presentation or you should have received our latest newsletter. Um, if, if for some reason you're frustrated and you don't know how to, please reach out um, to me and I will connect you so that you can. So don't, you know, we'll work all this out. Um, there's also some PTC uh, technical webcasts coming up. Uh, you, you can find those on PTC's website. I should have created, I should have included the link. I didn't, but it should be pretty easy for you to find these. Again, these I believe were not in the latest newsletter, but the newsletter uh, before. Um, the portal, and I'm just going to touch on the portal just a little bit. Um, we are going through a trans, uh, a, a, um, 
a migration, right, from our old Porter technology, which we had for years and served us well, but became outdated. In fact, the company we were working with actually outdated the technology uh, and they obsoleted it. So we are moving and, and we're, we're, we're having some growing pains, right? We're a volunteer organization. We're all trying our best to put it together, um, but it is, it is up and running. Um, now, understand there are some login issues and uh, people will need to reset their passwords. So, so just continue to work it. Um, let us know if there's, there's uh, any issues. Send questions to support at ptcuser.org. Again, support at ptcuser.org and we'll get you some help. We are working on a future, uh, and I mean near future, uh, introduction webinar, you know, um, that we can show you the new features and functions and, and then, you know, we'll record it and, and post it so you can, it can help you work through it. It's very exciting. It's got a lot of capabilities. We're just scratching the surface. As far as the webinars, um, we migrated all the previous webinars from day one over to the new platform. They are there. Um, we're, we'll work on you know, the formatting and all that stuff, making it prettier. This one will be there. Again, give us a little patience because we, we actually haven't posted anything new and we'll, 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 we'll figure that out. But just so, no, you know, it's very important. All of us are, you know, PTC users. We use Windchill, Creo. We don't like to lose data and, and we've done our best to bring everything over. So again, good things. This has been a long time in the making and it's a, just the start of a long journey of, of, of growing our, our footprint, our membership via this portal. It's a, it's a big investment for, for a volunteer organization like us. So we appreciate both your support and your patience. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn it over to the star of the show, Jan, and uh, let him take over from here. So Jan. So here we go. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome from Germany. So I'm sitting in my home office, like possibly most of you. And we're, it's 5 p.m. in the afternoon. We are having had a not so nice day today. It was snowing a little bit, very cold and humid outside, not very nice would have been a lot nicer to be in the San Diego in event right now, sitting outside, meeting friends and you, and so, but this year, not possible. So anyway, I'm happy to show you around a little bit what we've been doing. And um, so I picked the topic about uh, Creo color coding. So let's just go into it. Uh, a little agenda, so I will do a, a short introduction, a little bit talk about challenge and motivation of this topic, uh, dive in into characteristics of surface parameters in Creo and um, applying surface parameters about uh, through color coding. And finally, uh, trying to show how uh, a decoding surface parameters works uh, for appearance states and a summary and outlook is uh, the final thing. Uh, I will have uh, a little bit of time of, for Q&A later on. So I think I'll take about 40 minutes, so roundabout. So, and I will have uh, a few slides, but I will try to show a lot of things directly in Creo 7. So I'm using Creo 7, 7020 right now. And yes, you'll see that then. So many of you might have seen me or know me from my activities uh, in the PTC user organization. So I've been a <clears throat> CAD administrator at Braun in Germany for um, more than 20 years. <clears throat> I've been an active member of the PTC user and especially in the MBDTC. I'm chairing the European MBDTC that's uh, doing virtual, virtual events right now. And hopefully this year we can meet face-to-face -face again. And since uh, six years, <clears throat> I'm 
the CEO at BMW Software in Germany. And I'm, yeah, looking forward to show you around a little bit. So BMW Software, well, is a software, small software company that you might know already. Well, we've been founded um, 24 years ago, based in Erlangen in Germany. That's very close to Nuremberg. We right now have 13 employees and we are absolutely focusing on Creo Parametric Toolkit applications. Most of you have come across one of our applications before. If you have used either AFX, IFX, or EMX, those are fully integrated in the Creo software and you have, might have been used it before. In addition, we're having a few smart products that are not directly integrated or sold through PTC. And well, if that doesn't fit to your uh, installation, we are doing customer projects all, <clears throat> all the time. And we've been doing more than 200 since the early days. Yes, so that short introduction brings me uh, to the to the next topic. Well, you've been, you see uh, the team at the bottom right, the empty table of the last conference in uh, the PTC user event in January in uh, Phoenix. So hopefully there will be an event next year again, and I can meet everybody there. So that brings me to the, well, the topic of my, my presentation today. And well, it's an MBD topic and the general MBD challenge, very high level is, well, you want to apply PMI information to a 3D model easily. And this information shall transfer reliably to downstream consumers. So that's very high level, but I think that's the essence of MBD itself. Most of you have been in this uh, process already. And the general approach of this is very close to the traditional drawings. You're creating combined states that look like uh, 2D drawing views. You're applying notes, uh, attaching it to geometry. You're adding tolerances, you're adding dimensions and so on. So it's very close and very similar to the traditional thing. But it does have a lot of uh, downsides as well. And those of you who have uh, tried already, you know about what that means, adding things to a 3D model and transferring it reliably. So we, and like many other companies thought about why not trying to use an alternate approach? And for example, using colors uh, that contain the PMI to flow seamlessly through the whole process chain in downstream functions. So this is an example from uh, a multi-sign tool that we've been used. So there's colors in there and then on the left side there are associative uh, legend symbols that you can click on and you see the information highlighting on the right hand side. So there is a direct connection to this information. So what we've been seeing <clears throat> is there is a lot of benefits for color coding. I've been doing presentations about this completely. So I just wanna have, do a little bit here. Colors are very easy to visualize for humans. And you, you do have the possibility to bring colors into the model automatically through rules because you don't have to worry uh, about placement of any boxes, dimensions, uh, tolerances, or so on, because the, the color is directly on the surface and it can be applied automatically. Another point is that the information, so the, the code, the RGB code, um, flows through neutral interface phases re reliably. So this is, uh, for example, step interface can transport colors since many, many years. 
and the colors come come over to a career view session as well and they appear in a 3d pdf and so on so the 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 colors are, are very reliable transferring this information but there are disadvantages as well so humans can only distinguish a few colors reliably so this is very very limited let's talk about 15 20 25 colors that you can distinguish and they're looking different in every system and so that's kind of a disadvantage but they are very reliable uh, for machine readability and in addition there is some technical obstacles to transfer colors within creo and in, into um, downstream com consumers and this is more or less the topic that i want to talk about a little bit more in detail uh, today and this is about how colors can be organized in a creo 3d model usually you use appearance states to organize the colors and the colors for um, different use cases and if you're moving your part within a process chain and using interfaces like external copy geom you have to make sure that these appearance states come into the next target part as well and right now it's unfortunately impossible to transfer multiple appearance states through the process chain so that's bringing me into well the the process that i will look at and the interfaces in this process and um, this is the, a very classic plastic part process but it's applying to many other processes as well so usually uh, a plastic part designer he g creates a creo nice creo uh, part and this includes usually surface finish information parting lines tolerances geometry and what else he needs to do and finally he uh, creates a drawing and then he sends out drawing an article part to the tool design department if they are using creo as well they're <clears throat> they have to create a, a reference part usually the method of creating that is a, a copy geom feature or external merge feature or inheritance feature just bringing in all the geometry from the original article part within this reference parts uh, the tool designer adds shrinkage information parting surfaces and a lot of other information uh, to these reference part when he's really doing this he internally in his own department or by himself he creates a a mold manufacturing assembly and via the split features he's creating extracts these extracts are separate parts and they are containing water lines holes cutouts tolerances and so on and finally these uh, extracts will be sent to manufacturing either to create electrodes or directly creating tool paths in the manufacturing area for the electrode design usually uh, people are again using copy geom merge or inheritance features to just bring in the information in their environment so that's more or less the classic part process chain internally but in some cases or many cases uh, people are sending out to external partners or people who don't have different systems and so on and um, normally step export of the part and sending a drawing as well so that's the classic uh, scenery 
And so we, we thought about, well, what, what might happen if the drawing goes away? So let's move out the drawings. And so there is no drawing anymore, no, no paper where people can read the information on. So we're trying to bring in and fill this gap using colors from the 3D model. And so this approach is the <clears throat> next thing, what I, or the first thing, what I wanna show you uh, for in a live demo <clears throat> where I, I look at the external merge feature and how these multiple appearance states containing different color sets work in this interface. So let me bring up my uh, Creo here. So empty Creo, Creo 7, and I'm opening up my article part that I'm using here as an example. So, so this part is the result of a plastic part designer. It is, well, nicely designed so far. And I already have in here three combined states. For example, the revision. So you see here, the green color says revision one and the yellow color indicates revision two of the part. So that's one use case for my colors. I have another use case for different colors. So surface finish information, different symbols here. So they're associative. So let's have a look at here. And this here, just select on this, highlight my information. So I don't use any um, notes here that are connected to the surface wire leader lines. So it's just the associativity of the legend symbols. And I have a, another use case for indicating what uh, are visible and invisible surfaces. So the, obviously the, the blue ones are the visible surfaces later on in the, in the field and the red ones are uh, the invisible surfaces. So information that usually is uh, called out in a drawing. So if I <clears throat> want to use this part in my multi-sign process, I'm jumping in and opening up my reference part. My reference part itself looks very different, uh, not very different, so very much the same. And you see in the model tree here, there is a, the first feature is the external merge where the tool designer brought in the complete geometry. And then he added the shrinkage and a lot of other features. As he used a, a, a template part, he already has combined states, different names, but these combined states, I check edit definition, they have an appearance state with them, but this appearance state isn't filled so far. So if I just go in here and say, well, let's update my external match feature with the latest version of the part. I just go in here, redefine. Okay, so it regenerates. And then bring in in here the import revision, but it's showing the wrong appearance state. So I, I intended to have the revision information here. But this is uh, the problem that um, right now the appearance states and the combined states have. There's only the active appearance states transported into the reference part through this external merge. So I can show this again. If I go into the uh, import surface for 
and just do this once again. Redefine. Okay. And it brings me in the same colors from the model as in here. So that's not what I had in mind. So go back once again to my article part. And this is because my current active combined state is the visible surfaces. If I have picked another one, it would be different. So this just moving colors from the article part through external merge feature into a reference part doesn't work reliably. So going back to the presentation. Yeah, and so we, we sat back and said, well, what, what can we do about that? <clears throat> and what is the main task of the external merge feature and so on? And we came up, well, it's, well, it's transferring geomet geometry and surfaces. And um, then we asked us uh, what kind of information can be applied to services other than colors. And there we came up with, let's take a look at parameters. How, they, how do they do? And so we looked at the characteristics of surface parameters a little bit more uh, in detail. First of all, a textual parameter value is a lot more precise for human re readability. So if you have a, a, a parameter and a value to it, it's very precise. You can put in uh, any kind of information and you can read it and it's nicely trend. It's a lot better than a color because the, the color code you cannot see from the color itself. But the parameter values are language dependent and usually not translated. So sending out this information to kind of a Chinese person, uh, he might not understand the value of this parameter. And even more, these parameter information are visually hidden. You don't see the parameter in the model. And it's kind of difficult to extract this information later on. If you like, look at the definition of a surface parameter, it's very nice. You can add multiple parameters to a single surface. This allows you to add multiple information uh, to the to the surface and later on evaluate these uh, multiple surface properties. But again, a downside, you have to add this surface parameter for every single surface. You don't ca you cannot select a, a complete set of faces uh, and add a, a parameter to all of the faces. And about the transfer, well, we will see in a, in a minute that the transfer of these parameters through merge, inheritance, and so on is seamlessly. So fantastic here and this way. And they even transfer through step 242. But again, a downside, ClearView doesn't deal with uh, surface parameters at all. So that's a downside here. But the evaluation point is nice. You can evaluate multiple properties at the same time. So for example, you can kind of show all surfaces that have a, a special surface finish and are visible surfaces. So that's nice as well. So let's have a look how this works. So opening up another part. So open up this part and we don't have any surface parameters in here. So I will show this uh, from the very beginning. In the model <clears throat> ribbon, you go to parameters and you select surface and you see there, you have to select the surface. So let's take this large surface here. You have to enter a name for the surface. Let's ABC. 
And from there, you can uh, enter a parameter. So let's call this test and uh, make it a string type and the value hello. So, so applied. But uh, well, you you cannot see that there is any any surface parameter applied to the surface. What you have to do is you go go and have to find out parameters surface. Pick the surface. Here we are. So that's not too nice, but that's what Creo offers here. So let's cancel it out here. Go back to the presentation once again. So <clears throat> we came, at our said we came to the result. Well, having colors and parameters, why don't we try to combine those two and using the advantages of both and getting rid of most disadvantages. So I will try to <clears throat> improve the application of surface parameters. And on the other hand, trying to use the parameters for decoding appearance states. So that's what I want to show in the next live session here. So let's <clears throat> go back, so close that down here. And let's go back to the uh, reference part. Oh no, go back to the, uh, it's easier to, to use this one. So here we are. So for this uh, case, I'm using uh, smart color the first time. So the, the smart color itself um, has its own uh, ribbon tab and brings in uh, a few commands with it. And one of the most interesting commands uh, for me now is the color info button. So if I select this button, I can just select the surface and it gives me the color, the color code, any additional information and a list of parameters that have been applied to this surface. So very easy, very quick access. And I will show you how these <clears throat> colors can be used to add surface parameters as well. So for this <clears throat> purpose, I go into the administration just for showing you how a color definition is set up. So there's a lot of colors in here already. And I just for the, the, the purpose here, I use the revision one color and edit the definition. So you see there is a, a, a definition here for the color, the, the coding, intensity, transparency, whatever you need for a color definition. You can add process data. You can specify the symbol. Uh, that is being used for the legend later on. And finally, you can add as many as you like surface parameter to be added via the application if this surface gets the green color. In my case, uh, I'm having a surface a smart color revision parameter. It's from string. It has the value one and this parameter shall be added. But in the same <clears throat> in the same way, you can even remove parameters, surface parameters from surfaces, or you can make these parameters exclusive so that this surface can only host a single parameter. So let's cancel here out and use this um, color in here. So I'm in the first place, I'm doing a manual uh, selection here just to show how this works. So in my case, I'm in the combined state revision. So the combined states are listed here. I'm in the revision combined state here. And I'm just saying, select any surface. And I'm doing this one, adding 
my color. So close out this, color added. And just to show you how this information is being transferred into the model. So I have the color, the color code, I have additional uh, process data, and I have now two parameters added to the surface. So let's look <clears throat> into my article and article reference part, how this works there. So just go to, to my reference part that has this not very nice colors in here right now. And if I look in the smart color, color info, I see that initially <clears throat> those external merge feature transferred all the surface parameters nicely to the surfaces, but it did not well with the colors. But now I'm doing a kind of a workaround here and I'm uh, applying colors based on the parameters. So let's get rid of this here. So these colors have been detected in the current appearance states, but I don't wanna use them. And um, so it's uh, looking at the import revision combined state. Okay, that's there and adding uh, these colors. Oh yeah, no, before adding, I'm just showing how this works and just have a look at the rule in the background. The rule now is apply the green color revision one and apply it to all surfaces that have a parameter with the name surface surface color revision and the parameter value should be a revision one okay so it's looking at the surfaces and i'm applying the rules and on a click i got my correct color coding here and i'm just doing it with the other states as well deselecting the existing colors and applying the new colors based on the parameters. And the final visual smell, apply these as well here. And on another click, applying all the legend symbols um, as a flat to screen symbol. So, Very easy, very reliable getting all this. Again, if you're looking at one of these colors here, selecting, you see those are associative. <clears throat> so no matter what uh, Creo transfers there, you can decode the complete uh, information uh, using the surface parameters that have been transferred nicely through this interface. So let's look at the tool designer. He has created his reference part uh, nicely and I'm open now the mold manufacturing Takes a while, it's, it's a little bit larger assembly. Um, many of you, you have seen mold assemblies as well. Um, in my, in my <clears throat> assembly, I have the article ref part as the first component. Then I'm adding a, a work piece and I'm doing a lot of uh, volume splits and splits ending up with uh, cavity parts here for cavity parts. So usually when if I'm opening up for this one here, and I'm again asking 
with my nice command here about it doesn't have any any information so it's just the default gray uh, no surface parameters uh, came through this interface so that's not that's not nice um, so clearing this out once again and so my colleagues thought about how how can we solve this because when I'm doing these split features, I'm kind of losing all the information uh, that I've uh, applied previously in, in my process chain. So they came up with a, uh, uh, another command. This one uh, is, as we can provide this to many people uh, through the EMX uh, software module. And it's now regenerating all the um, <clears throat> all the parts, and it says, "Well, I have detected a lot of surface parameters, and I want. Do you want to continue and add all these parameters to uh, the extract mold volumes?" Okay, I'm doing so. And now the software um, looks at the reference part and the surfaces and tries to find the corresponding surface in the mold extract parts. And if it did a complete surface match, it's transferring the parameters. So that takes a little while because the part does have uh, a lot of faces and uh, he has to compare these surfaces with all other surfaces in the in the model. So this is a, a process that might take even a little longer uh, if you have a, a real large mold assembly in here. So process finished. Let's open up um, this part once again. So it looks different already. And uh, so let's just have a, a small look if this works. Okay. It has a color red right now. This is because of the uh, invisible surfaces, but it does have now all the three parameters, surface parameters. And that's good for me. And now let's try to rebuild the information uh, that I had before. So in this case, unfortunately, I don't have a template part that I could use. And so I don't have the combined states. In this case, I'm just uh, very quickly using the smart update for applying the combined states and the necessary appearance states in the model. So it detects all the uh, <clears throat> appearance state and combined state that needs to be created. And I just hit the update button. And in the background, uh, the software generates all the intended Combined states, including the appearance states. I'll close that down here and have a look. So we again have three combined states for our information. And now I'm just go back to the smart color while I'm saving a base appearance and go for applying the rules. Yes, okay, it detected uh, colors that I don't want to use here, but I want to apply all the manufacturing information. And I will do this for the visible surfaces as well, apply this information. And finally, I want to do it for the revision information as well. Creating the symbols. And again, we, we have recreated and rebuilt 
the complete information from the surface parameter. So a user can easily see and detect things what he wants to see and would have been not available having this been transferring through the process chain. So that's uh, more or less all about, yeah, the interfaces about external merge I showed. And in this case, I showed the interface within tool design creating extracts. So let's go back to the presentation for a second. And uh, just ask a simple question. <clears throat> so this was internal uh, interfaces, but how does this work with external interfaces like a step 242 or even a Creo view? So let's go into the system once again. And let's just use this uh, part that we have created. And what I'm doing now is just exporting this information to Creo View to show how this um, may work. So I've been doing this before, save this. Creo View file has been saved. Starting up my Creo View here and open the webinar PVZ file. And uh, if you look at uh, the part and the viewables, I do have all my viewables here the import revision, the import visible surface, and the manufacturing. So let's, this is the one here. Let's go for this one, unvisible and visible surfaces, and finally the manufacturing. And the beauty of this um, is here that the associativity still applies. So if you select uh, the legend symbol, you see the uh, geometry highlighting here. So I don't know where another, I, yeah, it's very, very small here. The yellow ones look a little bit better. Yeah, so very nice, very associative. Um, but what about the parameters? Well, as I said before, no way. There's no parameters transferring through if I'm selecting um, a face, if I'm selecting the part. Well, on, on the part level, there is uh, many, many parameters from uh, Creo and adapters and whatever came over. But if I'm selecting a, a single safe uh, face, there is no parameter in here. I talked to Robbie Morrison, uh, the PTC product manager on, on that. And he said, well, this, that's technical impossible to, to have a parameter on, on the surface because the surface definition is complete different from everything else. So that's what I know from him so far. But if you have the colors and the associativity, that helps in, all, in many, many cases. So close that down, make it small. Yeah, um, about the step file, I'm not doing an export here because it takes a little while. I created a, uh, an export up front from, from uh, my original article part. And this is what uh, step brings in. I was very surprised that even the names of the combined states came over when I imported it again. So I don't have any option to use a different CAD system. So I have to use uh, Creo out and Creo in and even if I go into one of my combined states, even the the flat to screen nodes came over and they still have the associativity, but they don't have a really nice placement anymore. So that's somewhere in space. And the colors don't really match. So why is that? The reason is that can only transfer a single appearance state 
information. So in, in this case, it was my revision appearance state. This was transferred nicely, but everything else was not transferred. So have a, let's have a look at the surface parameters. And look at that. The surface parameter transferred also nicely. And so what I can do now, yeah, very easy. I'm just using the same mechanism again. Um, and uh, using the smart update in this case to create, I'll just show this beforehand. So the, the appearance states don't make it over. So there is no appearance states in this model in here, but I do need the appearance states for distinguishing the colors. So again, a, a very quick smart update, a thing to create the appearance states within the combined states. So that's nice. So I don't have to do this manually. Let's have a look here. So my appearance state has been created and uh, added to the combined state. So now very, very easy, smart color, apply my rules for the first combined state, apply everything go to the next one, apply everything and go to the final one, apply, create my symbols. Close the dialog. And here we go. So we still have the original annotation that come over. Uh, in this case, uh, I think I just can delete all uh, the feature here. Okay, come on, select, delete. Deleting the complete information that was brought over because I don't need it anymore because I have recreated this information uh from the parameters and it's still associative and now i have my combined states my color coding information and my parameters in a regular step export that i've been using in creo right now here and as this is incorporated information in the step i believe that can be used from other systems easily well, that's, uh, I think, all about, uh, go back to my presentation. So we saw this. Just uh, for wrapping up a little bit. So <clears throat> the benefits of this combination is you can seamlessly let this information flow through a lot of interfaces and possibly the complete process chain using a combination of both. Because in some cases we saw that there, the colors haven't been transferred. In other cases, the parameters haven't been transferred. So using this combination makes it very consistent. Defining parameters is a lot easier if you're using kind of a software like a smart color, because when you're adding colors and automatically add the parameters, you can uh, multiple use uh, parameters for multiple surfaces in a single process and you can do it on a pushing a button. So very, very quick and easy. Yeah, we saw the reliable transfer of this information to the downstream processes. And this makes it possible to use the combined states and the appearance states to structure the information and be sure that you can 
look at this information in the same way in the downstream processes. And finally, a small outlook. Um, we've been doing a, a batch mode for the smart color. So uh, you can operate smart color from smart update. So I could even automate many of the processes I showed manually already. So just letting work smart update for you and adding the colors, the symbols, and doing it throughout a complete assembly. We also have added already uh, the language translations for legend symbols. So if there's any textual information in there, you can put uh, multiple languages in the background so people in different locations and countries can see it in their uh, local language. Okay, I think uh, I used a little bit more than I <clears throat> promised, but that brings me into the Q&A session and into the situation that I don't really know how I will uh, use this. So if you, um, Jan, if you click the Q&A, um, uh, yeah. you'll see the questions that are listed in order. Okay, so. So let's uh, look at it. Well, first question, Creo 7, which version? It's Creo 7020. Yes, so that's the Creo version. But this, uh, what I showed, it's not dependent uh, from the Creo version itself. I'm not completely sure if the parameters transfer into step in earlier versions, so I haven't checked that. But everything else should should work from Creo 4 uh, onwards. So next one, does Creo 4 also provide the connection between the 3D color node and the surface? So that when I click on the node, I can display the surfaces with the respective color. Yes, it is. So the surfer software can be used from Creo 4 uh, into five, six, and seven. So that's um, all you, all I can say. So any loss of PMI da data while conversion to a neutral CAT? Um, well, as I said, I'm not having uh, the option to to use either SolidWorks or CATIA. So I don't. I just have Creo for checking, and um, so my colleagues did a, a master thesis on on this and we we saw that the color code did flow into the neutral interface uh, step more or less a hundred percent so there was no loss on information there if you're having um, so this is just for colors itself so if you're having a multiple appearance states you need to uh, look at the interface and kind of work around as I showed. Uh, any real world examples of transferring colors of surface parameters data as software readable after conversion to step to support? Yeah, so um, supporting CMM coding and Calypso, that, that's a, a thing that we've been up to. So we we want to talk to science and we do have a, a bunch of customers that want us to make Calypso reading this information. So this is what I know so far. So perhaps next year or summer time frame, we will have a lot more information on, on this. Well, no need for 3D PDF for viewable. So that's up to you. <laughs> well, if if you're consumers of the information um, can can use a Creo view, perfect. If they're using a step, perfect as well. If they want to have a 3D PDF, so yeah, you, you you need to look for a 3D PDF generator. So. Uh, yes, yeah, smart color is an add-on. It's um, sold through your local reseller, or you can contact me as as well in Germany. 
yeah, rules can be pretty predefined in smart color. Yes, that usually is an admin task because administrators don't always want users to edit this information. So we will have a, a mode where a user can edit these uh, rules, but right now uh, this is admin task. Well, if the user is has admin rights, he can do, do it, but you can switch that off. So the parameter color rules. Okay, I don't understand that. Uh, how you, how can you create a parameter as to revision with value revision one automatically when making a change? Do you manually create this parameter and assign the value? Yes. So this was uh, just for a use case, but we were we are thinking about that we may do this automatically in the future by um, comparing uh, revisions. So this, but this is far future. But I think we could we could do this. I've been testing a little bit in this area, and I think we we can have a, a nice path to to color code revisions automatically. <clears throat> uh, well, any experience with QIF files? Uh, no, we don't have used QIF files so far. But this is what we've. We are looking in, but Q, because QIF is uh, one transporting mechanism to uh, the inspection machines, and so we we want to make sure that QIF files uh, can read at a, or make use uh, this color information. In general, this is possible. We we spoke with uh, the experts at Cap Video, so it's possible, but we have not finally uh, created this 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 way uh, can you define welding edges in a similar way with a similar legend okay so I don't know <laughs> uh, um, and, and and yeah, yeah. I'll take uh, yeah the presentation just so everybody knows the presentation within the week it'll be posted. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, up on the website, so I'll take those two. You can you can take the last two. Okay. Uh, Smart color works with Creo six. Yes, absolutely. Yes, it will be uh, available for viewing later. And well, Tiago, I know him. <laughs> Uh, I believe so, yes, Be because step is neutral. We looked into the step files. There is the definition of the surface parameters. So any other application should be able to, to grab this information. So that's what all I, I have here. Perfect. Well, thank you, Jan. We're just a few minutes over here. Uh, yeah, okay. great, no, great presentation. It was worth it. Great presentation. Thank you for addressing all the Q&A and thank everybody for, for attending. And we'll, uh, we'll see you on the next webinar. Thank you. Have a good uh, rest of your day.